everyone, this is Dosha and today we will be talking about the positive role in healthcare habits which should be established in children. And to talk more about it, we have uh, Dr. Risuru Chandra and uh, Dr. Devo Gita Chandra with us today and we are really glad to have them on board today. Um, so my first question to them would be, like, what is the first time when a parent should take an initiative to take their child to a dentist? Yeah, this is one of the most important questions uh, of the current scenario that we live in. Uh, before answering your question, I would like to talk about something. Normally, in our day-to-day practice, right, we see pediatric dental patients on a regular basis. And uh, normally, we see them at an age when they visit us is around 3 or 4 years of age. And uh, we see lots of decayed teeth and the patients or the parents may complain teeth, basically the pain in their tooth or there is some swelling. Uh, which is not allowing them to do the regular activities and all. And uh, so, we, when you open them up, then we see that there are a lot of KTSD and that the damage has already been done. So, uh, what we advise them, we would ask them rather than the first thing that uh, why didn't you get him or her before? And uh, the obvious answer that we get from them is that it has been advised or they have heard from the relatives and all that. Uh, or it's their common notion that the milk teeth are going to fall off and uh, so uh, there is no much, not much need to take care of them and uh, the pediatrician also when they have visited, they have also told the same thing, uh, which is uh, very, what to call it? Yes. Cement. Yes. Uh, so uh, now coming to your question, uh, actually the American Dental Association and also the Indian Dental Association, they advise that the first dental visit of a child should be at not less than or more than six months from the eruption of the primary tooth, the first primary tooth that erupts in the oral cavity, which is around six months or twelve months of age. So the first visit should be take place should take place at one and the first on the first birthday. So that should be the right. correct time that the first dentist should take place. Right. So uh, like the first birthday should be the first milestone of your yes your yes. initiative towards right. the oral health care of the child. Exactly. Now, uh, like, uh, there should be a question in every parent's mind, like when should they start brushing their child's teeth? Because uh, ordinarily people uh, think like, uh, okay, so there is like tender teeth and you know, you should be really careful. So they sometimes do not even go ahead for like two, three years and uh, so what do you suggest? Yeah, I'll just correct the question a bit. The question you asked me is when do they start brushing their teeth? I'll just correct that and tell you that the question should be that when should they start taking care of their teeth? And you will be amazed to know that taking care of the oral health, not only the tooth, the oral health of the child starts just after birth. And how I tell you we have to take care of the oral health? That is the when a child is born, there are no teeth present, right. only the gums are there. Now, the teeth are already inside, the two germs are already inside mm -hmm. and the main food that the baby is having is basically the mother's milk, the mother's milk. So that also contains some of the sugar and all and that in the in the future can cause pain. So how to take care of that is that first thing what we can do is we use at the upper oh. birth, yes. Uh, Why the gums? Yes. Mm -hmm. After 18 minutes. and in your finger and directly use the without toothpaste. You can just uh, after the first two erupts, 
you can directly use those silicon brushes to brush their skin and all. So we can keep it uh, tap on. Good. Tam is also used to be much more used to much when you make your skin. Keep the tam on. And also, this brushing should go on, and when the primary is done with the primary eruption, the tooth starts coming up into this. Eruption is complete by around two and a half to three years of age. So, by that time, the child should start using after one and a half years, one, one and a half years, the child should be using a full toothbrush with, uh, I mean, the child toothbrush with toothpaste. And uh, it is recommended that, that there are separate maybe child toothpaste are there, kids toothpaste are there, and it, uh, uh, it should not be used, and the adult toothpaste should not be used for children. As we always alter the dose of a medicine for a child, this is a common notion that uh, normally when parents come and I, use, I ask them that what kind of toothpaste you are using for your child, and they normally tell them that all the toothpaste that we are using for your toothpaste and all whatever we are using, the child is also using the same. But this thing we have to keep in mind that when we are not giving the dosage that is advised for an adult to a child, we should also alter the dosage of the toothpaste that we are giving for the children. So the children's toothpaste, the most important thing is the, con uh, the uh, presence of the alcohol. The concentration of the fluoride that is present in the toothpaste which is quite higher in uh, adult toothpaste and if it is used for the child, it can cause much harm in the child. So there are several... It, it is a spell. Mm -hmm. Like how we keep it as straight, you know, so the less amount of fluoride, less harm is possible. So they do not have the designated reflex, the sweet reflex. The sweet reflex does not develop until around two and a half to three years of age. Mm -hmm. So after the this reflex develops, then the child can go for normal brushing the fluoride uh, toothpaste and all. But before that, it is recommended to use the non fluoride toothpaste. The toothpaste that uh, normally the kids use. It should be separate from the toothpaste that normally the adults use because the dose needs to be altered for medicine for children. Similarly, the dose for toothpaste also needs to be altered for children what they are using for adults. So there are separate baby or kids toothpaste available in the market. I will not go into any of the particular brand names, but there are many toothpaste available which any of you can use. There are companies from Dr. Reddy's, Warren, Indeco, which provide your Kerodent and then your Cheerio gel. I don't, and then there is from Forget also there is toothpaste from OLG also there is toothpaste. So this toothpaste normally should be used for children but only after three years of age it should be checked whether it contains fluoride or not. And and also one more thing that is important is that uh, I don't know how many people you have not uh, you have noticed or not, but uh, these toothpaste normally are sugar free for children, which uh, because one of the important factors that has been found that the sugar that the sugar concentration of most of the medicines and all are so high that they themselves can cause scales and the sugar content of food and all as we already know. So the toothpaste are made sugar free for children and that should also be checked while you purchase any toothpaste and it should be IDA or FDA recommended. Right. So moving on to the next question, like how can parents help their children to you know learn about oral healthcare and you know kind of prevent any kind of decay caused uh, first of all, there is first is there is a self care approach. Mm -hmm. Before coming to the dentist, first there is a self care approach. Self care approach is the first the prevention of the problem, what we call. And there are different levels of prevention. One, the first the basic level of prevention is the primordial prevention, in which we do a lot of diet counseling and all. Before, because the most important uh, of the oral diseases that take place, mainly which are which are talking about the decays, it is related mostly to the diet. So the diet needs to be modified for a child. The amount of sugar consumption or the intake of sugar that the child is taking needs to be metered down or lowered down right. to a much lower range, mm -hmm. which the child can also enjoy the food and also it should not cause any harm to the child, particularly the tooth and all. Uh, so this thing is more important. And uh, other than that, uh, the frequently uh, it's the duty of the parents to check there is a technique. There is a uh, technique called the lift with the lift technique. The lift, the, with the lift with the lift technique, that the parents, any of the parents can lift the lip of the child and just take check the front tooth and whether there will be there if they find any white opacity or anything or any brownish discoloration present in the tooth, in the neck of the tooth, in the upper front tooth, then they can suspect that something is going not right with the tooth and the caries has started initiating. That means that decay has started initiating and it 
should ring the alarm and they must take measures either to remove the lenses or take proper care to prevent it or reverse the process. So this is the and there are also other techniques that for the first this is the same technique I that I told about and then there is the part where the patients the parents have to take the child to the dentist on a regular checkup basis every three months or six months basis and uh, which the dentist and not only about the kids whether there are there is another more more important thing is that we see a lot of uh, uh, people wearing braces nowadays of uh, 18, 20 years of age, 21 years of age, this I'm not telling that that can be totally preventable, but this can be preventable to a certain limit if the care for the teeth, primary teeth, particularly the mid teeth, is taken at an early age, then this crowding or this problem with the braces can be prevented. So, now I'd like to ask you a question like, um, it is really important that the